you once again welcome to fresh fire prayer ministries where we keep the fire of the holy spirit burning today is the day the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it we thank god for the gift of life we thank god for the gift of health we thank god for his blessing of divine protection and preservation we thank god for sending his only begotten son jesus christ our lord and savior to come and die for us and because of Christ, today you and I have eternal life. We are grateful. We appreciate God. We give him all the praise. We give him all the glory. For the Bible says, it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassion towards us faileth not, faileth not. They are new every morning. Great is God's faithfulness towards you and I. So it's always a blessing to know that you are a child of God, redeemed by the blood of Christ. Now, you, you are reconciled with God. You are not in enmity with Christ. Whilst we are your sinners, Christ Jesus came to die for us. That's the greatest blessing every believer should cherish above every other thing, knowing Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior and having eternal life in you because you are born again, redeemed by the blood. Every other thing is um, secondary, secondary. The blessings will come and follow everything. As we seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, he will definitely satisfy us with every other good things in our lives. Today marks the 26th day of our 40 days fasting and prayers. I believe from yesterday's divine inspiration and encouragement, each and every one of us uh, are in divine alignment to be able to press on and fast until victory is won. If you were able to fast today, uh, just click, uh, type in yes, by God's grace, <laughs> by God's grace. Uh, don't take any credit. Just thank God that every single day he gives you the grace to be able to fast. If you were able to fast, just type in yes, and we thank God for the grace given to us. We will, we will, his grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient for you and I. And for those of you who could, it's never too late. Tomorrow is another day or today is another day. Keep on pressing, keep on pushing. The Lord will help you and you will be an overcomer. But don't quit. Don't quit. Don't give up. Um, there is a blessing awaiting you after the end. By the time you realize everything has a beginning and this fasting will surely also have an ending. But we just don't want to be in the motion of we fasted. The Lord is answering prayers. The Lord is bringing deliverance. The Lord is restoring lives. There are many testimonies I haven't been able to even touch. Because my focus is that we should push. And after the end of the fast, we will take as numerous testimonies we can take. But right now, I just want us to keep on pushing until we are able to accumulate all the blessings, all the breakthroughs, all the miracles, all the deliverance, all the salvation, all the restoration. Everything that God has for you and I during this time of fasting and prayer, we are taking it back in the name of Jesus. We are taking back our health. We are taking back our joy. We are taking back our peace. We are taking back our sons and daughters. We are taking back our marriages. We are taking back our destinies, our potentials, whatever the devil stood. We are taking it back. We are recovering all in the name of Jesus Christ. So please let us be focused and let us keep on fasting unto the Lord. And the Lord will answer us in the mighty name of of Jesus Christ. The fasting is from 6 a.m. in the morning to 6 p.m. in the evening. And we meet every day in the evening, 11 p.m. Eastern Time, US 4 a.m. London, 5 a.m. Europe. Um, if you are pregnant, we advise you don't fast. You just join the prayer time every evening. Um, if you have any medical issues, consult your doctor and find out which type of fast you can engage. Is it partial fast, fasting to 12, fasting to 3, fasting to 2, or fasting on vegetables or fruits based on your the direction given to you by your physicians? 
but whatever it is, you do your best and the Lord will help you in the name of Jesus. God wants each and every one of us to do our best and he will do the rest in Jesus' name. I want you to join me right now. We have a very important topic to talk uh, to talk about. But before then, let's give glory and honor to whom honor is due and all glory, all honor, all praise, all adoration belongs to God. For he being our master, savior, deliverer, restorer, everything. Let us begin to lift up our voice this morning, wherever you are, lift up your voice. This afternoon, wherever you are, lift up your voice. This evening, wherever you are, lift up your voice and begin to thank God and bless God. Somebody is joining from Australia. It's afternoon time. Lift up your voice and begin to worship, begin to praise him, begin to exalt him, begin to adore him, begin to love on him, begin to appreciate him for every single thing he's done for you until date, how far he's brought you even this year and how he's sustaining you, how he's helping you, how he's coming through for you in the midst of challenges. Let's all lift up our voices and thank God for your son, thank God for your daughter, thank God for your family, thank God for your health, thank God for your the strength given to you in spite of what you are going through. Others are going through similar or even lesser than what you are going through. But God is giving you peace in the midst of the storms whilst somebody else just committed suicide just because of the little issue they are going through. But you are going through worse, but the grace of God is sustaining you. You are going through many challenges, but the grace of God. The Bible says a righteous man or woman will go through many trials, many challenges, many tests, but the Lord delivers them from them all. And therefore, the Lord is delivering us even in the face of all adversity and all challenges. Why shouldn't you and I thank him? Why shouldn't you and I praise him for giving us a roof over our head, for giving us clothes on our body, for giving us air to breathe freely? We don't pay for oxygen. We don't pay for the air we breathe. If, if we have to pay for the air we breathe, which air is very essential to life, only the rich will be living. Only people like Steve Jobs and, 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 and the, the wealthy uh, celebrities will be alive because they will have the millions to what be able to buy the air. <laughs> but God, even though He knows that this is the the most essential commodity in life, without air you can't survive. He's giving it to us freely. We don't have to purchase air before we survive. He's giving you air to breathe, food to eat, uh, health and life. What else? We just have to praise Him and worship Him. And above all, He's giving you the best. Christ Jesus, as your Lord, as your Savior, as your Redeemer. What else? You, we complain about many things, but really, we don't have much to complain because God has been good. No matter your situation, God is still good to you. And we got to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and begin to be grateful. Don't be ungrateful. Worship, worship, worship. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I bless you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I magnify you, Jesus. I adore you, Jesus. I enthrone you, Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy of all my Lord, praise. You reign. Lord, you rule. We bless thy holy name, Lord. We exalt your holy name, O God. You're still the we magnify same. your holy name, O God. Who is like unto thee, O God? We bow Among the gods, who is like unto thee? Your holy name. You are glorious in holiness, fearful in praise, and you do wonders. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, Thank you, Holy reign. Spirit. Thank you, Father. Lord, we worship you this morning. And all of the earth. We worship you this afternoon. You're still the we worship same. you this evening. We worship you here and now. We bow Thank you. Your For today is the day that you have made. We will Come rejoice on, and, yes, and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your voice and bless him. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are the king of glory, the king of kings, the ancient of days, the bright morning star, the soon coming king. I am that I am. All power, all glory, all honor, all adoration, all praise belong to you. There is no God to be compared to Jehovah. Lift up your voice and bless him. Reba Baba, Reba Talibi Yanta, Nekon Tolibi Yanta, 
Begele Bosata, Becata Rabados, Reba Baba Shata, Becele Bosata, Manta Rabadosa, Reca Torian Tarivianda. We glorify your holy name, Lord Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy. The Bible says, from the rising of the sun to the going down the same, your name is to be praised. Your name is high above the nations, and your glory is above the heavens. Who is like unto thee, O God? Among the gods, who is like unto thee? You are glorious in holiness, fearful in praise, and you do wonders. Magnify the name, celebrate the name, enthrone him, worship him. Let's go on like you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you for life. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for redemption. Thank you for being my provider. Thank you for being our sustainer. Thank you for being our help. Thank you for being our light. Thank you for being our shield. Thank you for being our strong tower, our hiding place, our refuge, our defense, our security. Thank you for being our provider. Thank you for being our sustenance. Oh God of Abraham, oh God of Isaac, oh God of Jacob, you are worthy, you are worthy. You are a dependable God. You are a reliable God. You are a wise God. You are a faithful God. Blessed be your holy name. We worship you. Thank you for Monday. Thank you for Tuesday. Thank you for Wednesday. Thank you for Thursday. Thank you for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for how far you have brought us. Thank you for delivering us from sickness and diseases, from the traps and the snare and the evil plots and evil devices of our enemies. Thank you for showing us your mercy, your goodness, your favor, salvation. Thank you for redemption. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you for Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thank you for your holy angels that are constantly fighting for us. Oh, you are worthy, Jesus. Oh, you are worthy, Lord Jesus. Oh, you are Lord, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, 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 Lord Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We enthrone you, Lord Jesus. We worship, we worship. We bless you, Jesus. Mighty warrior, Lord, we worship. We worship you, we worship you. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If we say we are without sin, we deceive ourselves and that the truth is not in us. The Bible says, Come, let's reason together. If your sins be as red as scarlet, it shall be made as white as snow. And if it be as crimson, it will be made as wool. It doesn't matter how stained you are, I am by sin 
the blood of Jesus Christ is a powerful, potent detergent that is able to blot out, cleanse from every sin. So the Lord says, come and let's reason together. Come and tell me your sins. Come and tell me your weakness, your flaws, your faults. Where you've fallen short, where you missed it. Confess your sins to me that you may receive mercy. Proverbs 28. 13 says that he who hides his sins and does not confess it will not receive mercy from God. So when we come before God, we have to be transparent and be frank with ourselves, sincere with ourselves, and tell God that, Father, I messed up. I did this. I did that. I was envious. I was jealous. I was angry. I was, I, I, I gossiped. I lied. Father, forgive me. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Lord Jesus, cleanse me. Lord Jesus, purge me with a precious blood. I want to be holy. I want to be righteous. I want to be perfect. I want to walk with you in truth and in spirit. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to be holding on to my sins anymore. I want you to deliver me and make me as white as snow, as white as wool. So Lord, if there be anything in my life, if there be any anger, resentment, retaliation, any bitterness, any indifference, any carnality, any worldliness, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, any foolishness, any hate, any malice, any resentment, any anger, any rage, any unforgiveness, evil thoughts, evil motives, evil conscience, any actions, inactions, any reactions that does not glorify you. Father, forgive us for lying. Forgive us from negative words, curse words, idle words proceeding from our mouths. Forgive us. Forgive us from wrong thoughts. Forgive us from wrong behaviors and attitude that does not reflect Christ. Forgive us. Wash us. Wash us for not worshiping you in truth and in spirit. Forgive us for not loving you with all our heart, all our soul and mind. Forgive us for making idols of things in our lives. We've made our relationship idols. We've made our children idols. We've made our job idols, finances idols. We put it first before you, Christ. Forgive us. Forgive us wherever we've fallen short. Cleanse us from any immorality, any fornication, any adultery, any cheating. Forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Whatever we have been, whatever we have been partakers in, that does not glorify you. Wash me, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Purge me, Lord. As David says, create in me, O God, a clean heart, a new and a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O God, but restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Lord, cast us not away from your presence. Let the precious blood of Jesus Christ cleanse us even now from all our sins, all our iniquities, anything in us that doesn't glorify you, anything that we do to disobey your word, to rebel against your word, to go against the Holy Spirit, any ways, any attitude, any lifestyle we are living that is not inconsistent with your word. Father, have mercy. Forgive us. We repent. Please go before God and be transparent. He knows everything. You are confessing to him for mercy and forgiveness. You are not, rep you are not confessing because you are telling him. He already knows what you've ever done and what you are even about to done, do or what you are even planning to do. He knows it all. But the time of confession is a time of sincerity to say, this is what I've done. I acknowledge it. I ask for your mercy and your forgiveness and your pardon. So let the blood cleanse me. So you're not telling God, he already, he's, he's aware, but you are telling him so he can forgive you. Because if you don't confess your sins, you don't receive forgiveness. It stays with you. And the accuser of the brethren will use it against you. And that's how many of us are always disqualified. We are disqualified from many blessings, disqualified from many opportunities, disqualified from open heaven because of sin. The devil will use sin to shut doors before you and your angels will be standing there aloof, unable to do nothing because they are justified by the accusation because one, you did it. Two, you didn't confess. Three, the devil is accusing you. So you are guilty. 
because you haven't asked for mercy. Tonight, right now, this morning, this afternoon, wherever you are, go before God and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive us, O God. Forgive us, O God. Forgive us, O God. Forgive us, O God. Cleanse us, O God. Purge us, O God. Purify us, O God. Sanctify us, O God. With the precious blood of Jesus. 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 Let the blood, let the blood, let the blood. Let the blood, 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 let the blood of Jesus. Cleanse you, cleanse me from all our dead works. Cleanse us from any impurities, any immorality, from every fleshly canal ways, any attitude, any behavior, whatever is in us that doesn't glorify God. Lord, we come humbly before you right now, confessing our sins, our iniquities, our transgression before you. We ask you to create in us a clean heart, O God, a new and a right spirit within us, O God. Cast us not away from thy presence, but restore us Restore to us the joy of your salvation. Give us a new heart. Take away the heart of stone and replace it with the heart of flesh. Help us to be obedient. Help us to be obedient to your word. Help us, O Lord Almighty, to yield to your will and your ways. Help us, O Lord, to follow the directions of the Holy Spirit. We repent, O God. We repent even on behalf of our family members, our loved ones, our children, our husbands and wives. We pray that you have mercy on our children and forgive them of their evil ways, their sinful lifestyle. Forgive our spouse forgive us oh lord we come before you asking for mercy have mercy jesus have mercy on me have mercy on me have mercy have mercy have mercy have mercy jesus have mercy lord jesus have mercy cleanse me cleanse me cleanse me whatever i have done wrong wherever i've fallen short of your glory whatever i've done to disobey the voice of the holy ghost i've disobeyed your commandment your word your precepts oh lord your ordinances father we come humbly before you Forgive us in the name of Jesus. Forgive us in the name of Jesus. Cleanse us by the blood. Wash us by the blood. Purge us by the blood. Purify us by the blood. Blot away our iniquities by the precious blood of Jesus. Help us, O God, to be holy. Just as you are holy. Help us to be righteous. Just as you are righteous, God. Help us, O Lord Almighty, to worship you in truth and in spirit. Forgive us, O Lord. Wherever we fall short, we repent, O God. Let the precious blood, let the blood of Jesus cleanse us even now in the name of Jesus. We thank you because your word says if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So right now, even by faith, we receive and accept our salvation. We, we receive, O oh Lord, and accept, O oh Lord, your, your forgiveness. Thank you for forgiving us. Help us, O oh Lord, to also forgive those who have trespassed against us. If we are holding any grudges, we are holding any bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness against anyone who has trespassed against us, right now we release them from the prison of our heart and we release forgiveness to them. We hold no malice and no jealousy and no anger, no bitterness towards them anymore in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the blood. Thank you for the power in the blood to cleanse us, to wash us and present us holy before you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for cleansing us from our sins in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God. If you did this in faith, your sins are forgiven because the Lord has promised in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, 8 and 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all our righteousness. Our next is to pray that the Lord will fill us. If you've been joining this fast, 40 days fasting, our emphasis is that you may be filled and full of the Holy Ghost and with his power. Without the spirit of Christ, the spirit of God in you, you can't even claim that you're a Christian. There are many people who are claiming to be Christians, but they don't have the seal of the Holy Ghost in them, which means that they are not marked as children of God. It takes the Holy Spirit to seal you, to make you a child of God. It takes the Holy Spirit to help you to live a holy life. It takes the Holy Spirit to help you to please God. It takes the Holy Spirit to help you to obey God's commandment. It takes the Holy Spirit to lead you in the path of righteousness. It takes the Holy Spirit to help you to die to your flesh, to your world, to carnality. It takes the Holy Spirit to give you a rebirth called born again. This born again experience is not being born by the flesh, but born of the spirit. It is the working of the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Spirit that is our comforter, our strength giver. It is the Holy Ghost that gives us power to be victorious in our prayers against the forces of darkness that rise up against us in judgment. It is the Holy Ghost that is our everything. Our everything in Christendom is about the spirit of Christ. God, Jesus said, it is expedient it is to your advantage that I go to the Father. Because when I go to the Father, the Helper will come and help you. So 
it is out it is to your advantage it is to my advantage that jesus went that his spirit can abide in you and i that we can do even much more than what jesus did you need the holy spirit if you want to be a victorious christian if you want to overcome sin if you want to overcome your problems and your challenges if you want to live a victorious christian and be bold like a lion and do great exploit you need to walk with the spirit of christ i want us to pray right now and say lord in the mighty name of jesus christ i'm thankful i was recently asking somebody uh, what's your five prayer request and i was thankful that they have they had shifted the holy spirit as their first prayer request and i said god is working god is working people are getting the message people are getting the message she had many issues very, very sensitive challenging issues, but she had shifted the holy spirit that she will know god and have a spirit and be connected to the holy he has brought it to the first topmost of his top five prayer requests and i knew that god is working when the day you will come to that place you will see how life will become much more easy for you in life and you will begin to know the essence of life the day you will get that revelation when you will prioritize the holy spirit above car and dress and marriage and this and that the day you wake up to that realization you will see you you will walk in another dimension of god's blessing amen so we are going to pray for the most important you have to place a premium value a premium value on the holy spirit you have to make it the the epicenter of your heart desire father in the name of jesus christ fill me with your holy ghost fill me with your presence fill me with your fire fill me with your anointing i need your spirit because when you are full and filled with the holy spirit that's where you become untouchable that's when you walk a victorious christian life begin to pray right now in the name of jesus lord baptize me even right now with the holy ghost and with your power in the name of jesus we pray for the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray for the Holy Spirit. We ask you to fill us. Lord Jesus, ask. we ask you to fill us with the Holy Ghost and with your fire. Lord Jesus, fill me with the Holy Ghost and with your fire. Fill me, O God. Fill us, O God. Fill me, O God, with the Holy Ghost and fire. With the Holy Ghost and power. With the Holy Ghost and fire. With the Holy Ghost and power. With the Holy Ghost and fire. With the Holy Ghost and power. Lord Jesus, fill me, O God. Baptize us, O God. With Holy Ghost and power. With Holy Ghost and fire. We pray for fresh oil. We pray for fresh anointing. We pray for fresh fire. We pray for fresh mantle. We pray for fresh grace. Bapana bashanda. Mikata lavados. Rakata tata. Mekatuni mikata. Masukata rabada. Repati nikata. Masukata lavados. Yanda de bibi seti ni busanelama. Lord, baptize me, Lord, with the Holy Ghost and with your power. Baptize me, Lord, with the Holy Ghost and fire, with the Holy Ghost and power. Baptize me, O God, with the Holy Ghost and fire. Repa pala baba, repa basukata, mega tu kata rabados, reka paradados, man tu ni mikanta, mezinta labados, repanto vegada, man zagada rabada, reba dabada rabada, reba dabar rabada, reba dabar rabada bada, repan deve deve sos, reba shanda, mazuka vende le basanda, menko la baba 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 baba, Baptize us, O God, with the Holy Ghost and with your fire, with the Holy Ghost and with your power. 
We pray for fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh anointing, fresh oil, fresh fire, 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 fresh power, fresh fire, fresh anointed, fresh fire, Holy Ghost power. Lord, I pray for Holy Ghost power. I pray for the Holy Ghost power. I pray for the Holy Ghost power. I pray for the Holy Ghost power. And you ask oh God with the Holy Ghost and power. And you ask oh God. Holy Ghost, I need you. Holy Spirit, I need you. Holy Ghost, I need you. Holy Spirit, I need you. Holy Ghost, I need you. Choose me for your glory. Choose me for your glory. Holy Ghost, fill me. Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me until I'm full of Fill us on this prayer line. Let your presence saturate this prayer line. Let your presence saturate the viewers. Lord, we pray for your fresh oil. We pray for fresh fire. We pray for fresh anointing. We pray for strength. We pray for your grace. We pray for your strength. We pray for your grace. We pray for your power. We pray for power. Fresh power. Fresh anointing. Pour your spirit upon me, O God. Pour your spirit upon us, O God. Pour your spirit upon me, O God. Pour your spirit afresh upon me. I need fresh oil today. I need fresh oil now. I need fresh oil. Extra oil. Extra power. Extra fire. Ripara bara 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 Fresh oil, fresh fire, fresh oil, fresh power, fresh oil, fresh grace, strength from above, grace from above, power from on higher. For those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. Pray, pray for the Holy Ghost. 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 Ribana Banaba, 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 Ribana Banaba,
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Receive fresh oil. Receive fresh anointing. Receive fresh anointing. Receive fresh anointing. Receive fresh anointing. Receive fresh oil. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And let us love take over us. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so honored. Thank you, Jesus. We give glory. We give honor and praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you all the praise, Lord. We give you all the praise, Lord. We give you all the praise. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your presence. Be magnified, Lord Jesus. Be glorified, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Today we want to talk about the mysteries of cloth. The mysteries of garment or cloth. The mysteries of garment or cloth. The question is, what cloth do you have on? What garment, what cloth do you have on? When Adam and Eve were in the garden of Eden, God clothed them with his glory. When Adam and Eve were in the garden of Eden, God clothed them with his glory. So even though they were naked, they were not ashamed because the glory of the Lord covered their nakedness. And then Adam and Eve sinned and lost paradise. They lost Eden. They were driven out and now they began to experience the nakedness. So they decided to cover their shame. And they made for with themselves leaves to cover themselves. But that wasn't enough to cover their shame. So God himself had to kill a lamp and use the skin to clothe them, to cover them. So covering has been very, very important spiritually. Covering, spiritual covering. Your cloth, your garment is very, very important spiritually. To the point that even if you dream and you are without a right cloth garment, it is a bad dream. If you dream and you are naked, it's a bad dream. Meaning that fiscally you are being stripped from your glory and you will be soon experiencing shame, reproach, and, and public embarrassment and harassment. Because clothing that you put on covers your nakedness. And the right apparel also reflects your glory. So clothes is very important. If you also dream and you are wearing tattered clothing, it means your destiny has been tempered with. 
you will struggle in this life and not achieve much. In fact, because you've been seeing yourself wearing those tattered, torn clothing, dirty clothing, that's why wherever you go, you experience rejection, disappointment and poverty and lack and all those bad things. Because you are not honored spiritually with the right garment. To the point that even Joseph had to go through three garments. The cloth of many colors given to him by his father representing glory. He was sold as a slave. The cloth of slavery was put on him. Then later on, he was put the cloth of a servant. Then later on, the cloth of imprisonment. And then finally, he was honored again. And put in another cloth. Cloth. Every one of the cloth was depicting and re implying who he was at that time. When you saw Joseph with the coat of many colors, you knew that he was the favorite of his father. He was the beloved of the father. And he received all attention and VIP treatment from his dad. When you saw him, with a coat, with the clothing of a slave, it was a new thing. He was now sold as a slave and being is running around and being used as a slave. When he entered into prison also, they put on prison cloth. It was also reflecting his condition at that time, that his destiny has been confined, has been trapped, imprisoned, enclosed, and he's limited. Your garment, very, very important. So when you have dreams and you see yourself naked, <laughs> you got to raise up. You have to rise up and begin to do some serious fasting and prayer. Otherwise, very soon, everything you have, will, you will lose it all. And very soon, you will be put into serious public radical or reproach or disgrace until people begin to point fingers at you. It is not new. You already saw it in your dreams. You were naked. You were naked. So you were about to be exposed for shame and reproach to come to you. So the right clothing is very important. In the physical world, the garment or the clothing of a person even helps you to identify the person or their profession. You go to the hospitals and the doctors have a certain cloth they put on and you know that this is a physician. Nurses have a group, a, a type of um, cloth they put on. It identifies them as nurses. You go to a mechanic. They have a certain dress they wear. This tells you this is a mechanic. The question I pose to you today <laughs> is that what garment what cloth are you putting on spiritually what is this what is the nature what is the state of your spiritual cloth what clothes is, what is clothing you even are you really clothed some people we enter into the spirit realm and they are naked some people you enter into the spirit realm and they are naked they are without clothes so you understand why their lives are empty because demons and witches and evil spirits have stripped them off their clothes so shame reproach disgrace embarrassment disappointment every negative thing finds them because they have been stripped off even cloth others to you enter into the spirit realm and they are having filthy garment others to you enter into the spirit realm and they are having garment of reproach garment of barrenness garment of poverty garment of lack, garment of delay. Different clothes has been placed on different people. You need Jesus to deliver you from evil garment and put upon you the garment of glory. The cloth of glory. Of glory. Join me as we make this spiritual journey. And I pray that the Lord tonight will visit somebody and change your garment, will change your clothes and take off your life every filthy garment.
every filthy garment. There are too many of us wearing filthy garment. Some of us, the garment they have put on you is the garment of affliction. The garment of affliction. So every day you are under constant oppression, suppression, depression, attacks. Because spiritually, the demons and the witches have placed on you. So a traffic to you, bad things. Others too, they have placed upon them the garment of infirmity. So they are, that garment attracts sickness and diseases to them. Every day, doctors are diagnosing high blood pressure. You have diabetes. You have heart problem. You have kidney problem. You have everything in your body. Why? Because spiritually, your garment is the garment of infirmity, sickness, and disease. So it's trafficking, and there's a transaction of different sickness into your body because of what you are wearing spiritually. Some people, too, they are wearing the garment of bondage. Some people, they, 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 if you sleep and you wake up, you sleep and you dream that you are wearing prison dress. You, you are wearing a prison dress, prisoner's dress. You better pray. Or you prayed and you saw your son or your daughter. You better pray. Because very soon, they'll be arrested for a crime. And be put in behind bars. And some of you, to us, you see yourself in prison, clothing in your dream. It means you're a prisoner. And that's why you are confined. That's why you are limited. That's why you are restricted. That's why there's nothing going on in your life because spiritually you are in prison. You got to understand the garments. Garment of reproach will make all you always experience negativity, shame, misfortune, and all sort of negative things. Some of us, you 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 dream and you find yourself wearing a very dirty cloth, and it can represent the garment of poverty, poverty, tattered, dirty cloth, dirty cloth. So you understand now why your life is full of penury. You are always struggling financially because they have put upon you the garment of poverty. You can never succeed financially. They put it on you. You identify as a poor person. So it doesn't matter how much money you, you make. It, will, it must disappear. It must, it, you must lose the money and the money must leave you without you being able to account for any good thing. Some people too, they have put upon them. You see, when in the past, when people were wailing and, and mourning a deceased or a person who is, has experienced tragedy or calamity, they have what called sackcloth mourning cloth they put on a certain cloth to mourn the deceit some people when they have put upon them the cloth of mourning it means that every day the devil the demons the witches will place upon them one situation or another that will cause them to cry that will cause them to be sad and sorrowful and be grieving and be saddened by tragedies and calamities because in their Spiritually, they have placed upon them the garment of grief and sorrow. So you see that person going through one tragedy after the other. They lost their wife, and then they lost their son, and then they lost their mother, and they lost their car, and they lost this family member, and they were diagnosed with cancer, and they were diagnosed, and their son did. You see set different calamities befalling them because spiritually, they have placed upon them the garment of sorrow and grief. Some of them ask to the place upon a garment of failure. It doesn't matter how brilliant you are. You can teach others. They will go and take the exams and pass. But you, because you wear the garment of failure and defeat, you only, when you try it, you will fail. You will try it, you will be defeated. You will be defeated. Everybody goes through green light. Green light. Only you, when you get there, it will be red light. You will be stopped. You will be opposed. You will be resisted. Why? Because they have put upon you a garment of defeat and failure. Today, may the Lord remove every filthy garment. Today, may the Lord Jesus remove from your body, remove from your spirit, remove from your soul every filthy garment, any filthy garment that the witches have placed upon you, every filthy garment that the demons have placed upon you, every filthy garment that the familiar spirit the ancestral spirit, the inheritance spirit, 
the altar spirit in your mother's house, in your father's house, have placed upon you to be, cause you to always fail at everything you embark on. May that filthy garment be removed and be consumed by fire in the name of Jesus. Say amen. People are wearing garment of rejection. Garment of rejection. No wonder everywhere you go, you must be rejected. Others too, spiritually, they have put upon you the garment of difficulty, hardship, and trial. Difficulty, hardship. Everything about you, we have to struggle. Go and read the book of Revelations. Those that Jesus was delighted, he says he will give them a new cloth. When God is happy and pleased with you, he gives you a new garment that is radiating with light and glory. In the same way, when the enemy is distorting and altering, damaging your destiny, he only places upon you a filthy garment to displace you from fulfilling your destiny. Garment of hold up, delay, stagnation, retrogression, garment of failure, and all challenges. Let me show you one. And this thing called this evil garment, you got to be very careful. It doesn't matter. Even you can be a priest. <laughs> you can be a Christian. If you don't watch yourself and live a life which is clean, the, 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 the devil will put upon you evil garment and stop you. The devil will put on you an evil garment. He doesn't, he doesn't care whether you're a Christian or not. All he's waiting for is for you to mess up one time, one time. And some of us have made some silly mistakes in our lifetime, in the past. And the devil has had the opportunity to place upon us different garments. That today, it is defining us. Spiritually, they see the garment and they say, this is who she is. So this is why we have to attack her. That's why we have to make her poor. That's why we have to make her single. That's why we have to make her struggle. That's why she has to be rejected. Because your clothing spiritually is reflecting, is indicating, is telling the powers that they can do that to you. If you see a slave, you treat the slave like a slave in the old times. If you see a doctor, he also carries respect by his clothes. When you see a president dressed up and or the queen of England dressed up, he, she commands the respect just by her appearance as a queen or the king or the prince or the princess. In the same way to when they reduce you by the evil filthy garment or cloth they put upon you, people will trivialize and dismiss and limit, uh, look down on you and, and, and take you for a ride. Take advantage of you, disrespect you, use you and abuse you, be rude and mean to you. And you're asking yourself, why is it that in this company, they treat me like I'm a trash? How come my husband treats me like I'm trash? How come my children, I don't even have respect with my own kids. How come my neighbors treat me anyhow? They dare not do that to this person. They dare not do that to this co-worker. How come when it comes to me, everybody wants to take me for a ride? Why is it that they are treating me this way? You ask yourself, how come they, they cannot do that to this person or that person? And, and I'm in the same class with these people, but they this person dare not speak to this person this way, but they have the audacity and the effrontery to come and stand before me and confront me and talk to me anyhow. Because spiritually, they have decoded the kind of garment that you carry and it doesn't carry glory. It doesn't carry respect. It doesn't carry honor. It doesn't carry dignity. It doesn't carry prestige. So you have to now begin to work on your garment. Otherwise, people will keep on looking down on you, belittling you, degrading you, and you'll be sad. How come I'm rejected here? How come people... T no, 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 no. Spiritually, the day your garment will be changed, you will see how people will treat you differently. When Joseph was a slave, they treated him different. When he was in prison, with prison cloth, he was treated different. When he was also given the royal cloth as the prime minister of Egypt, he was given a different treatment. The garment you are wearing will command 
the kind of respect and attention you receive. So tonight, I pray that God will deliver you from spiritual, satanic, demonic garments that has been placed upon you. Let's watch how a person's life was reduced to nothing by an evil garment. Zachariah chapter 3 verse 1. Zachariah 3 verse 1. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest. This is what a high priest is not just an ordinary priest, but the very senior most high priest, a person who stands before God, a person who does sacrifices on behalf of Israel, a person who has the, 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 the privilege to be able to enter into the holies of holies, to meet God one-on-one, -on -one. the high priest, the highest state of, uh, of honor and position a person could attain in Israel, the high priest. He showed me the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan was standing at the right hand side to accuse him. He's the high priest. One, he's the high priest, a servant of the Most High God. Two, he's standing before an angel of the Lord, the presence of God. Yet the devil, Satan, had the audacity to disregard his high priesthood, to disregard the presence of God, and to disregard the angel of the Lord. And say, I don't care whether there's an angel. I don't care whether you are the high priest. And I don't care whether you are before God. I will still stand at your right hand. Your right hand is your power. That's where your power is. That's where your glory is. He says that I'm standing right by your right hand. Why? Because I have already incapacitated you, but you don't know. <laughs> I've already reduced you to nothing. You are a high priest, but you've been reduced to nothing. And how, how did the devil have audacity to be able to stand at their right hand? And some of us, you are praying, you are fasting. But a spirit husband is standing at your right hand, still accusing you. You are fasting and you are praying. Yes, the spirit husband has the audacity or the spirit wife still come and rape you, still come and have sex with you. You are doing everything as a Christian. Witches are still standing at your right hand, blocking you from getting a job, blocking you from getting a race, blocking you from passing your exams, blocking you from being pregnant, blocking you from succeeding, blocking you and delaying your star. But I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. I pray. I fast. I'm doing that. He's still standing at your right hand. Satan is still standing by our right hand. Still standing by some of us, our right hand. So accusing us. Accusing us. So you are fasting. You are fasting. I'm telling you, you are, when was the last time you saw an angel? When was the last time you saw with your eyes a real angel visiting you? Here, this guy has come to the place where he's seen the angel of the Lord and he's standing before the angel of the Lord in the presence of Jehovah. Still, the devil had the audacity. So I don't care. As long as I have an accusation against you, standing at his right hand to accuse him. That's what I'm saying. Whenever you are praying, make sure you make time to praise God and to ask for forgiveness of sin. Otherwise, your prayers will go nowhere because there will be an accuser who will be accusing you for everything you did in the course of the day, who will accuse you of the things you did in the course of the week, who will bring to remembrance what you said to your husband, what you said to a client, what you said to a customer, how you, you treated a person, the gossip you went into, and the thing you watched or heard. The accuser will be accusing you. So you'll be fasting and praying and you are not seeing any headway because you are not confessing certain things but the accuser of the brethren, he will accuse you and bring everything you and I we are doing. So whenever you are sinning, there are only three people who know about it. If you sin, God knows it. If you are sinning, the devil who is making you sin knows it. And when you sin, you yourself also, you know it. So we have three people knowing it. God, the devil, and yourself. So don't deceive yourself. 
if you fail to repent, the devil will take you it up to God and say, I saw it. I was there when she was lying. I was there when she cheated. Cheated. I was there when she stole. I was there when she was backbiting. I was there when she was entertaining another person's husband. I was there when she lied. And now you want to give her a miracle and a breakthrough? No! Let her be denied. The devil was at the right hand of the high priest accusing him at your right hand. At your right hand, your place of power and exploit and victory and success, he has incapacitated, paralyzed. Now you can't use it. You can't make it. You are a Christian. You are talking. You are talking. But you can't manifest the fullness of God's glory in your life because Satan is standing at your right hand. And we'll look at why he can stand at your right hand. The Lord said to Satan, the Lord, the Lord. Now, this man is standing before God's presence. Satan is still standing with him. The Lord said to Satan, the Lord, the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebukes you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebukes you. Is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire? A burning stick. He was on fire. He was zealous, doing exploit in the fire of God. But now he's been taken out of that fire. And when a stick is taken from fire, it will be going, the fire will leave it and it will become an ordinary wood. Verse 3. Now Joshua was dressed. Now Joshua was dressed. Now, that's that, this is where the problem is. This is what you, you are struggling with. This is where you are going through your issues. Now Joshua, the high priest, who is standing before God and his angel, with Satan standing at the right hand. The only reason the devil had audacity to stand at his right hand and accuse him and snatch him from the fire is because he was wearing a filthy garment. A filthy garment. A filthy cloth. Dressed in a filthy cloth. Every time you dream and you see yourself in a filthy cloth, wake up and fast. And pray to God to deliver you from filthy garment. Ask the Lord to consume that filthy garment. You would dream and you see yourself naked. Pray and ask the Lord to have mercy on you and clothe you back. Otherwise, shame, reproach, disgrace, public embarrassment, and humiliation is something you'll be experiencing, and rejection is something you'll be experiencing it on a consistent basis. You dream and you see yourself wearing torn clothing, tattered clothing, very dirty clothing. Pray and fast that the Lord will deliver you from any filthy garment of poverty. You dream and your son or family member or yourself is putting on prisoners, prisoners clothing. You know when people are put in prison, they clothe the way. If you see yourself wearing it, you better pray against incarceration, imprisonment. You dream and you see yourself Dressed like somebody who is going to be buried, wake up and pray against the spirit of death. You dream and you keep on seeing yourself wearing dark black clothing. Pray against bad luck and the spirit of death and destruction. Joshua was dressed in a filthy cloth. As he stood before the angel, filthy cloth. And some of us don't understand why we are presenting ourselves before God in fasting, in prayer, but still, heaven seems to be shut. Prayers are unanswered. We are not getting our miracles and breakthrough because the devil has succeeded in getting us to put on filthy, filthy garment, filthy cloth. As they stood before God, and therefore the heavens are shut, therefore doors are shut, opportunities are shut, divine helpers are shut. 
the angel said to those who were standing before him, take off the filthy cloth. Take off the filthy cloth. Today I pray that whatever filthy garment that has been placed upon you, may the Lord take it off. May the Lord Jesus take it off. May the angel of the Lord take it off. May God remove that filthy garment off your life and consume it by his fire in the name of Jesus. Take off his filthy cloth. Then he said to Joshua, See, I have taken away your sins and I will put a fine garment on you. I've taken away your sins. There are two ways whereby the devil can easily place on you filthy garment and disqualify you from heaven, disqualify you for your blessing, disqualify you from your breakthrough. Even though you are doing 40 days, you think the devil cares about your 40 days. You think the devil cares about your prayers. You think the devil cares about what you are doing. No, 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 no. Even Joshua, the high priest, standing before God in heaven, it didn't stop the devil from re accusing the, the high priest. So don't think the devil is impressed about your 40 days. Don't think the spirit husband is impressed about your 40 days. Don't think the witches are impressed by your 40 days. All they are looking for is one filthy garment. One filthy garment they can place on you. And then disqualify you from heaven's blessing. So, you, it, so that your fasting becomes in vain. You were starving. You were going through dieting instead of fasting for them because they will not let you possess your possession. So God says, take off this filthy garment. He can't see my glory. He can't minister to me. He can't do my will. Then they said to Joshua, see, I have taken away your sins. The ways God, the devil disqualifies us, one is our personal sins. Things that we choose to disobey the word of the Lord. And to do it. And the devil now begins to accuse us before God. You see, she is into pornography. You see, she is into pan, uh, masturbation. You see how she's after somebody's husband. You see how she's cheating. You see how he is into lust. You see what he's watching. You see how he's keeping company with sinners. And entertaining and doing the things they're doing. The accuser of the brethren is accusing us based on our lying, our gossip, our malice, our hatred, unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment. Anything that we do contrary to the word of the Lord, he's used marking it and then standing before God and saying why you should not get that break breakthrough. I have taken away your sins. So our sins can cause us to place on us our filthy garment. Some of us, certain relationship we entered into. After that sexual intercourse with that person, a filthy garment was placed upon you. From that day, relationship doors were shut. Some person you kept company with and you did certain things with or a certain place you went to. Did some consultation with a fetish priest and took advice from them. From that day, a filthy garment of sin was placed upon you. And that begins to follow you, to disqualify you. Because the accuser was always going to use it to deny you. Secondly, the way this filthy garment is many times passed upon us is by generational iniquities. Generational iniquities. The sins of our parent being passed on to us. Her mother went to consult this and this voodoo priestess or spiritualist for this help. And for that reason, we are, in, we are implicating her and her children. And therefore, today, a filthy garment has been placed upon you because of the sins of your parents, your ancestors. I will put, and then it says, I've taken away your sins. I will put a fine garment on you. For you to receive restoration, God must first forgive you and I from our sins and then begin to remove 
the filthy garment and now begin to replace it with a new garment, a new garment, a new garment of glory, a new garment of beauty, a new garment of honor, a new garment of riches. So when we move on, it says, Then I said, Put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him while the angel of the Lord stood by. Immediately his sins were dealt with. The devil could not accuse him anymore. And that's why during this time of fasting and prayer, make sure you are consecrating yourself unto God. Make sure that you are desiring above everything to live a holy and a righteous life. Make sure that this year you are desiring to read your word and obey God's commandment. And everything that is sinful, you do away with. Because you don't want the devil, the accuser of the brethren, to accuse you. And stand at your right hand and shut doors so that you can't pass through to receive your blessing. We can't continue to gossip. We can't continue to backbite. We can't continue to be envying one another, being jealous of one another. We can't continue to hate on one another. We can't continue to be living immoral life. We are Christians, and yet still the things we are watching, the things we are listening to, the things we are opening our spirit up is, is, is filthy. Filthy songs, filthy movies, filthy things. Keeping wrong companies who are always talking to you about immoral things. Your friends, yes, I didn't say some, but you are hearing them talk about immoral things, defiling our spirit. This allows the devil. So now you understand why some of us, our deliverance has become difficult. It doesn't matter how much we are fasting, how much we are praying, because the, the, the devil is still standing at our right hand, because we are still having sex outside of marriage. We are still fornicating. We are still living a hypocritic lifestyle. We are still masturbating. We are still taking the alcohols. We, we, we are deceiving ourselves. And then we don't understand why we cannot be delivered from the spiritual husband or the challenges we are going through. Because the, 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 the devil, the accuser of the brethren, is standing at the right hand. But immediately you repent and say, Lord, have mercy. Forgive me. Wash me. And now place upon me a new garment of righteousness. You realize that the accuser of the brethren has been muted. He can almost no longer speak against you because what he was using to accuse you has been removed. I pray that anything that the devil is using to accuse you and I, may the Lord have mercy on us. Forgive us. Forgive us of our trespasses. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our shortcomings. Forgive us of our iniquities. By the precious blood of Jesus, may the Lord remove. May the Lord wipe away. May the Lord cleanse you. May the Lord blot away your iniquities. And take away the filthy garment of your life today. So that the heavens may be open. That the angels of the Lord may clothe you with the apparel of glory and honor and dignity. Immediately they replace this. Verse 5. Immediately they replaced his, his filthy garment with a fine garment and placed a turban on his head. Then you realize that he was restored to his former glory. Some of us, the garment has stolen our glory. The garment has stolen our star. The garment has stolen our destiny. The garment has stolen our potential. The garment has stolen our blessing. But today, God says, that filthy garment, that filthy garment, that filthy garment, that came as a result of your past sins or your present sins, that filthy garment, that came as a result of the iniquities that you inherited in your bloodline, that causes you to sin against God. That filthy garment is hereby cleansed, removed, blotted away, blotted away by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, God is blotting away our iniquities. I want us to go to Colossians. Very, very important that you recognize that Lord let the blood of Jesus blot away my iniquities so that I can be restored. Otherwise, you are fasting, you are praying, but demons are standing by you. Witches are still visiting you. 
They are still attacking you. Familiar spirit, monitoring spirit, Asian spirit, dwarf spirit are still linked with you because of filthy garment. Because of filthy garment. May the Lord remove every filthy garment. Any areas we have compromised, whether we were in unholy soul ties or attachment with wrong people that brought in this filthy garment, however these filthy garments came in, may the Lord be merciful and begin to deliver us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Somebody, the Lord is taking away the filthy garment. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is taking away every filthy garment. Every filthy garment. Every filthy garment. The Lord is replacing it. I want us to go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2 verse, verse 13. It says, And you being dead in your trespasses, he has made alive to gather with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. The Lord Jesus, when you and I confess him as our Lord and personal Savior, has forgiven us from all our trespasses. Today, I want you to have a revelation. It is not much about prayer, but it's about revelation, light. Because some of us, there's a stronghold in us. You need to get revelation and light. And the truth will set you free. And the truth, you see, here there was no binding. Here there was no casting out. Here there's no deliverance. But the devil was silenced. Today made a voice of accusation against you from your mother's bloodline, from your father's bloodline, be silenced by the blood of Jesus. May every voice of accusation, condemnation, every voice condemning you, leveling evil charges against you, let the accusing voices of demons, let the accusing voices of familiar spirits, let the accusing voices of witches and wizards, let the accusing voices of altars in your mother's house, father's house, let the accusing voices of your enemies that are pointing fingers against you be silenced, be muted by the voice of the blood of Jesus. For the Bible says that who can lay a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who then can condemn. Today, let evil voices Condemning you, be muted, be silenced, be zipped, be shut up by the voice of the blood. The Lord Jesus forgive us all our trespasses. Some of us, we are still living on the sin consciousness. But today God is saying that the devil, knowing that you are still bound in your mind, that you of, of your past sins, and your ancestry bloodline sins, and that's why he's still accusing you. But today, I want you to know that now that you have run to Jesus, now that you want to walk with Jesus, now that you have decided to live for Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the precious blood of Jesus cleanses you and I from all our transgression, from all our sins, for all our iniquities. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus, that your blood has removed, eradicated, evacuated, has expunged all my sins, blotted it out. Verse 14, very key. This is not about prayer. This is about revelation and light because immediately light shows up. Darkness must go off. There is, haven't you prayed enough and the spirit husband is still molesting you? Haven't you prayed enough and the witches are still harassing you because they know you don't have light? Truth will set you free. The Bible says true knowledge, the righteous will be delivered. True knowledge, true knowledge. Tonight, may the knowledge of God's truth shine light in your darkness. Be illuminated and come out of your bondage. The Bible says, verse 14, Colossians 2, verse 14. 
having wiped out, having wiped out the handwriting requirement, having wiped out the handwriting of requirement that was against us, the accusing voices, the accusing words, the accusing handwriting that the devil was using against us. He has what? Having he has what? Having wiped it out. The blood of Jesus wipes out. The blood of Jesus wipes out all my sins, all my iniquities, all my transgressions. I want you to say it. The blood of Jesus, the precious blood of Jesus wipes away my sins, my iniquities, and my transgression. The precious blood of Jesus wipes away my sins, my iniquities, and my transgression. The precious blood of Jesus wipes away my sins, my transgression, and my iniquities. The handwriting of requirement that was against me, the blood cleanses me from them all. Hallelujah. Which was contrary to us. Which was contrary to us. That was what was giving the devil the grounds, the legal right to accuse the high priest. And he has taken it off the way. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Having nailed my sins to the cross. Having nailed your sins to the cross. Having nailed your iniquities to the cross. Having nailed your transgression to the cross of Calvary. It doesn't matter what your mom did, your father did, your grandparents did, whatever they went to. It doesn't matter you, what you did in the past. If tonight you believe the finished work of the blood of Christ, having, he has already taken it out and nailed it on the cross of Calvary. It is finished. Satan, it is finished. Satan, it is finished. I owe you nothing. Demons, it is finished. I owe you nothing. You spirit husband, it is finished. I owe you nothing. You can't accuse me anymore. You can't hold me in, in bondage and captivity. You can't claim ownership on me anymore. You spirit spouse, you witches, you wizards, you family altars, you demons, you can't harass me anymore. The blood of Jesus, hallelujah, has bored all oh my cares. My sins, iniquities on the cross of Calvary. I owe you nothing, Satan. Say, Satan, I owe you nothing. Satan, I owe you nothing. I command your, your voice of accusation to be silenced. I command your voice of accusation to be silenced. I override every negative charges and condemnation. May the Lord drop every charges against you tonight, this morning, this afternoon. May the Lord drop every charges and accusation against you. May the Lord silence the voices that are accusing you and causing you to go through these attacks. The Bible says, having disarmed principalities. Now we are dealing with the powers. Principalities, powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphant over them in it. So you see, this is the victory. This is the victory that the precious blood of Jesus gave us victory to erase, to remove the filthy garments. Now let's look at another person who the Lord Jesus had to remove their filthy garment and we'll, 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 we'll finish with it. I want you to join me as we go to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Filthy garment. Tonight, the Lord is removing filthy garment from you. Every filthy garment is being removed. Every filthy garment is being removed. In the name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father. Say, Heavenly Father. By the finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. Heavenly Father, by the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, let the blood of Jesus Christ remove every stain of sin, iniquity, and transgression of my life. Let the blood of Jesus 
remove every stain of sin, iniquity, transgression of my life. Let the precious blood of Jesus remove, wipe away, blot out from my life every stain of sin, iniquity, and transgression. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, every principality, every power, every Satan, any demonic entity, any altar in my mother's house, my father's house, any accusing enemies, accusing voices, any witchcraft voices that is condemning me, accusing me before you, or accusing me in their coven, in their council meeting, Lord, by the voice of the blood, let my accusers be silenced. Let my accusers be silenced. Let my accusers be silenced indefinitely. Let their mouths be zipped, shut up. Let their tongue cling to the roof of their mouths, never to be able to mention my name to accuse me anymore. Father, let every charges and every condemnation they have spoken and altered against my life and my destiny. Let it be dropped. Let it be neutralized. Let it be cancelled. Let it be revoked. Let it be destroyed by the blood of Jesus. I receive my divine clearance by the blood. Satan, I owe you nothing for I have been redeemed by the blood of Christ. If you get this revelation, I'm telling you, the spirit husband will not come again. Those bad dreams will not show up again because no, now you know who you are and you know what the blood has done for you. We are moving on to the next phase. We are moving on to the next phase. Jesus Christ, um, John chapter 11, verse 1. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, her sister. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her, with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, the sister went to him saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. Him. Whom you love is sick. You can love the Lord. You can serve the Lord. But if you don't know who you are, you can still die. Lord, whom you love is sick. You love the Lord, but your marriage is not working. You love the Lord, but you can't still get a job. You love the Lord, but things are not going well. You better cry out to Jesus. That's why they came to Jesus. Jesus, the one you love is dying. If you don't show up, you'll die. So it doesn't matter whether you're a Christian, trials, tests, and tribulations will come. But make sure you know who you serve. And immediately Jesus came. When he came, Lazarus was already dead. But he said, I am the resurrection and the life. I'll bring Lazarus back to life. But now I want us to jump into what I want to deal with. John chapter 11, verse 44. Let's go to John chapter 11, verse 44. John chapter 11, verse 44. That's what tonight we are dealing with. Grave clothes. Evil garment. Grave clothes. Tonight God is releasing people, removing evil filthy garments. Whatever garment you've been seeing in your dreams, God is removing it. Whatever garment the witches have placed upon you, God is removing it. Whatever garment enemies have placed upon you, God is removing it. God is giving you a new garment. A garment of victory, a garment of success, a garment of breakthroughs, a garment of riches, instead of a garment of poverty, lack, bondage, captivity, slavery. You see people who are into slavery or people, you see the kind of dressing they dress and you also see what their masters wear. May today, may the Lord remove every garment of oppression 
affliction. Some of you are wearing this garment of sickness. It attracting every sickness, every sickness, including COVID has come to visit you because there is a garment that says that she's a candidate. Go for her. Tonight, let every filthy garment be removed. Now listen to this, verse 44. So now Jesus Christ comes and he comes to realize that Lazarus is dead, placed in the tomb. And they are saying it's too late. But Jesus says, it's never too late with me. For I am the resurrection and the life. He or she who believes in me, even though they are dead, will come back to life. Your situation is not hopeless. Tonight, this morning, this afternoon, as God takes away the filthy garment from off your life, you will begin to experience his glory. You will begin to experience abundance. You will begin to experience breakthrough. You will begin to experience success. You will begin to experience destiny fulfillment. It's never too late when Jesus shows up. All you need is that today, have an encounter with Jesus through his word. So he who died, okay, 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 okay. Be with me for a minute. So now let's see, verse, let's start reading from 32, verse 32. John 11, verse 32. Then when Mary came where Jesus was, and saw him, he fell down at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Oh, Jesus sympathizes and has empathy for your problems and my problems. He has compassion. Jesus has, he's full of compassion. Don't think that he doesn't care about your struggles, your challenges, your, 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 your persecution and your, your trials. He sympathizes with you. He wants you to come to the knowledge of truth so he can quickly deliver you because God works with his word and you got to know the truth so the truth can set you free. Tonight, this morning, this afternoon say in the name of jesus i remove every filthy garment type it i remove every filthy garment i remove every filthy garment that has been placed upon me i remove it in the name of jesus i remove it in the name of jesus i remove off my body i remove off my soul i remove off my spirit every satanic evil garment every satanic evil garment every demonic cloth i remove it in the name of jesus and i command it to be consumed by fire i command every filthy garment be consumed by fire every filthy garment be consumed by fire every filthy garment be removed and be consumed by fire in the name of jesus i remove evil garment from my life Every garment of fear, every garment of depression, every garment of anxiety, every garment of cancer, every garment of shame, every garment of reproach, every garment of stagnancy, every garment of retrogression, every garment of failure and defeat, every garment of barrenness, every garment of infertility, every garment of joblessness, every garment of grief and sorrow, I remove it. I remove it. I remove it off my body. I remove it off my soul. I remove it off my spirit. And I command the fire of the Holy Ghost, to burn them into ashes, to burn them into ashes, to burn them into ashes. Every evil garment, catch fire and burn it to ashes. Every evil garment, catch fire and burn it to ashes. Every evil garment, catch fire and burn it to ashes. Garment of sickness, catch fire and burn it to ashes. Garment of spiritual marriage, catch fire and burn it to ashes. Garment of pornography, masturbation, Catch fire and burn it to ashes. Garment of poverty, catch fire and burn it to ashes. Garment of singleness, loneliness, in the name of Jesus, catch fire and burn it to ashes. Garment of failure and defeat, catch fire and burn it to ashes. Garment of delay, stagnation, retrogression, catch fire and burn it to ashes. Every garment of rejection in the name of Jesus, every garment of rejection, every garment of disappointment, every garment of reproach, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, burn it to ashes, burn it to ashes, burn it to ashes, burn it to ashes of my body, burn it to ashes of my soul, burn it to ashes of my spirit. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. May the Lord remove the evil garment. May the Lord remove every evil garment. Whatever garment that has confined you into spiritual 
imprisonment, psychological imprisonment, spiritual bondage. Receive your liberty in the name of Jesus. Receive your liberty. Let that filthy garment. Let that filthy cloth. Let that filthy garment. Let that filthy cloth. Let that filthy garment. Let that filthy cloth that the witches have put upon you that you they will never let you marry. That they are put upon you, that they will never let you finish that school. That they are put on you, that you will never get your citizenship. That they are put on you, that they will delay your destiny. That they are put on you, that your husband can never love you. Let that filthy garment, that filthy garment, that filthy clothes catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire. Burn it to ashes, 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 burn it to ashes. I see evil garment. I see evil garment. I see satanic garment. I see demonic garment. I see ancestral garment. Catching fire. 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 Say evil garment. Catch fire. Evil garment. Every evil garment on my body. Say 21 times. Evil garment on my body. Catch fire. Burn it to ashes. Burn it to ashes. Say it 21 times. Burn it to ashes. 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 Every evil garment that is on my body, on my soul, on my spirit. Catch fire. Burn it to ashes. 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 Garment of spiritual marriage. Burn it to ashes. Garment of poverty. Burn it to ashes. Garment of unemployment, financial hardship and difficulty. Burn it to ashes. Garment of sickness, disease and infirmity, cancer, COVID, whatever high blood pressure, liver problem, kidney problem, lung problem, lupus, whatever it is, catch fire. Burn it to ashes. Every garment of ancestral powers that are always troubling you in your dreams, having you, making you have bad dreams, evil dreams, satanic dreams, Manipulating your life and your destiny. Catch fire! 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 Burn it to ashes! Burn it to ashes! Burn it to ashes! Burn it to ashes! Garment of witchcraft. Garment of witchcraft that allows witches to traffic your life, that allows witchcraft to torment you, that allows demons to torment you, that allows spells and charms to work on you because you are wearing the garment of witchcraft. So witches have the access into your life, access into your body, access into your property. Let that evil garment, let that evil cloth, let that evil garment of witchcraft that is causing witches to torment, afflict, and torment and harass you. Catch fire! Catch fire! Catch fire! Burn it to ashes! 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 Burn! 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 Hallelujah. Somebody just got their deliverance. Please don't be here watching me. God is delivering people in the name of Jesus. Satanic evil garments are being consumed. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, and Jesus wept. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was weeping, and groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Verse 34. And, and he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. See how he loved him. Jesus loves you. That's why he died for you. Tonight, this morning, this evening is the ending of that evil garment on you. It's coming to an end in Jesus' name. The Lord will clothe you with a garment of praise. Verse 37. And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again groaned in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was laid against it. Then Jesus says, take up the stone, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead for four days. God is not bothered, moved by the impossibility. 
neither is it bothered by how bad your life has been because of this evil garment. How this evil garment has caused you never to be able to do anything in your life, never to achieve anything or attain anything in your life. How delayed you are in life. Once Jesus shows up, there's going to be a testimony and there's going to be miracles and breakthroughs. You are never late when you meet Jesus. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you, if you will believe, you will see the glory of God. If you will believe, you will see the glory of God. If I believe, I will see the glory of God right now, this day. If you will believe that God is addressing your evil garment, you will see the glory of God. If you have faith that today God is dealing with the issue of your evil garment on your life, the garment of rejection, the garment of disappointment, the garment of failure, the garment of defeat, the garment of barrenness, the garment of sickness, the garment of unemployment, the cloth of reproach, shame, humiliation, and disgrace, the cloth of delay, retrogression, and stagnation, the cloth of generational curse. If you believe, if I believe, I will see the glory of God. If I believe, type it. If I believe, I will see the glory of God. If you will believe, if you will believe, if you will not doubt and believe your deliverance right now, you shall receive the glory of God. You begin to manifest the garment of praise in the name of Jesus. Didn't I say to you, if you will believe, you will see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his, his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Verse 43, now when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, comfort! Lazarus, comfort. Jesus is calling upon you, comfort! Come out of your grave clothes. Come out of your grave clothes. Come out of your grave coat. Come out of your singleness. Come out of your spiritual marriage. Come out of your unemployment. Come out of poverty. Come out of witchcraft attacks. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Let every demon in your body, witchcraft attacks in your body, come out of you in Jesus' name. Come out. Lazarus, comfort. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, bound hand and foot, bound hand and foot. The guy came out all right, that is salvation, but he came out with grave clothes, hand, head and foot. He came out bound hand, his hands were bound, his feet were bound, his whole body were bound with what? grave clothes and jesus says that no this is not salvation you cannot be saved and still be fighting witchcraft you cannot be saved and still not enjoy your marriage you cannot be saved and still not get peace in your life in your marriage you cannot be saved and still be wrestling with spiritual marriage you cannot be saved and still get be unemployed you cannot be still saved and still be delayed and stagnant you cannot be saved and still dealing with depression and anxiety you cannot be saved and die of cancer you, no no jesus says that how come you are coming out with this grave clothes of rejection grave clothes of defeat and failures, grave clothes of stagnation and retrogression, everything, you are bound from head to toe, hands and feet with satanic, demonic grave clothes. Grave. It means that it kills things in your life. The grave clothes represent things that are dead. They place a grave cloth around your marriage and your marriage dies. They place a great cloth around your body and your destiny dies. They place a great cloth in your business and your business dies. They place a great cloth around everything. It means the thing is dead. 
and the thing must be done away with. And that's why some of us, they have buried us. They have buried our destiny. They have buried your potential. They have buried your star. They have buried your marriage. They have buried your finances. They have buried your glory with grave clothes, meaning you are dead. You are dead woman walking, dead man walking. That's why nothing is working. Because they have embalmed you. They have embalmed you with grave clothes. Say, Heavenly Father. Now, now listen to this. When Jesus saw the grave clothes, he was so angry. He said, verse 44 again, And he who had died came out, bound hands and foot with grave clothes, and his face wrapped with cloth. Still the grave clothes. His face was still wrapped with cloth. They wrap your face, meaning you can't see any good things. They wrap your hands, you can't receive any good things. They tie your, hand, your, your legs, meaning your legs cannot enter into any good thing. They cover your face, it cannot see any good thing. They bound your hands, you can never receive any good thing. They tie your feet, you can never make advancement and move forward with life to make progress. They have incapacitated, crippled, paralyzed your destiny as though you were dead. Now listen to this side. Jesus said to them, lose him and let him go. Jesus said to them, lose him. This is my message. Jesus said, I've commanded you to come out. Salvation. Your soul, your spirit has responded. But when it comes to the removing, the removing of the grave clothes, he said, Jesus did not re release, Jesus did not lose Lazarus. He did not remove the grave clothes. He says, lose him. Tonight, the Lord has sent me to come and lose you. But you have to give me your cooperation so that you'll be loose from the grave clothes. Jesus says that lose him, lose her from that grave clothes. You are going to pray a prayer. And as you finish this prayer, whatever grave clothes will be loosened out of your body. You know the grave clothes that they have put on you unlawfully, illegally, without your consent. They have placed on you. You want to get married, but they are placed singleness. You want to get pregnant, but they are placed barrenness. You want to get a job, they are placed unemployment. You want to be healthy, they have, they have put on you grave clothes of sickness and infirmity. You want to achieve your dreams and vision, they have put on you grave clothes of failure and defeat. You want to move forward with life, they are placed upon you stagnation. Jesus says that, I'm sorry, you got to lose yourself. Lose him. So I'm going to pray. In the name of Jesus, every great clothes, every great clothes that has been placed upon my life, be removed, catch fire, and burn into ashes. That's the simplest prayer. But you are going to pray it aggressively with divine revelation and understanding. Something will happen. Something will do what? Will happen. And you shall see the glory of God. Something will what? Will happen. And you shall see the glory of God. You're going to say this prayer with me. Simple prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil grave clothes. Every satanic grave clothes. Every satanic garment. Any witchcraft garment. Any ancestral garment. From my mother's house. From my father's house. Any garment placed upon my life. From household witches. Every garment placed upon my life. By my enemies by familiar spirit, by monitoring spirit, every demonic grave clothes, witchcraft grave clothes, altar grave clothes, every evil garment that the enemy has placed upon my life, upon my star, upon my glory, to cover my face, to bind my hands and bound my feet, to cripple my destiny, every evil grave coat, causing rejection, disappointment, delay, and demonic attacks, every grave clothes in the name of Jesus, every evil grave clothes that my enemies, grave clothes of slavery, grave clothes of bondage, grave clothes of captivity, grave clothes of imprisonment, grave clothes of poverty, grave clothes of lack, grave clothes of barrenness, grave clothes of singleness, grave clothes of struggle and hardship, oh, financial insufficiency. Every great cloth of sickness and diseases, unhappiness in life, 
whatever the witches have placed upon me, whatever the demons have placed upon me, whatever my enemies have placed upon me, today, right now, I command every grave cloth to be removed. I remove the grave cloth. I remove the grave cloth and I command it to be consumed by fire, burn into ashes, be consumed by fire, burn into ashes, be consumed by fire, burn into ashes, be consumed by fire. I remove every grave cloth. I remove every grave cloth. I remove satanic grave cloth. I remove every witchcraft grave cloth and I command it to be consumed by fire, burn into ashes, be consumed by fire, burn into ashes, be consumed by fire. Be angry and begin to pray aggressively that every grave cloth be removed, be consumed and burn into ashes, be removed, be consumed, be burned into ashes in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. I command, I command every grave clothes. Catch fire, burn it to ashes. Catch fire, burn it to ashes. Catch fire, burn it to ashes. Every satanic grave clothes, every demonic grave clothes, every satanic grave clothes, every demonic grave clothes, every satanic grave clothes, demonic garment be removed off my body, be removed off my soul, be removed off my spirit, be removed off my body, remove, remove off my soul, be removed off my spirit. Every satanic grave cloth of insanity, of madness, of insanity, of craziness, be removed off my body, remove off my soul, be removed off my spirit, be consumed by fire. Every grave cloth of sickness, of disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, COVID, be removed off my body, be removed off my soul, be removed off my spirit, be consumed by fire, be consumed by fire, burn into ashes. I come Command every witch come great close of spells, shams, hexes, divination, sorcery, incantation, enchantment, black magic, voodoo, obia. Be practiced against my life, my marriage, my finances. Be removed. Be consumed by fire. Be consumed by fire. Burn it to ashes. Pray, pray, pray. <laughs> I command every satanic great group, every demonic great group, every witchcraft great group, every ancestral great group, every altar in my mother's house, in my father's house, my wife's mother's house, and father's house, every great cloth they are placed upon my son, placed upon my daughters, placed upon my ministry, placed upon my destiny. Be removed, catch fire, burn it to ashes. 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 Every grave cloth, every evil garment, every grave cloth, every evil garment, every grave cloth, every evil garment, place on my body, place on my soul, place on my spirit, place on my destiny place on my staff be removed up catch fire burn it to ashes up be removed up catch fire burn it to ashes up be removed up be removed up every witchcraft up every sorcery every attachment crowd up be removed by fire catch fire burn it to ashes I remove every great clothes. I remove every great clothes of limitation. Remove, 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 remove. Remove the great coat of limitation. Remove the great coat of limitation. Remove the great coat of limitation. Remove the great coat of limitation of restriction. Whatever has been used to limit your destiny, remove it. Remove it. Remove it. Let it be removed. Let it catch fire. Burn it to ashes. Every great coat of stagnation, of failure, of defeat, of sickness, of witchcraft, be removed. Catch fire. Burn it to ashes. Be removed. Catch fire. Burn it to ashes. Pray. <laughs> Ribadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabadabad
I remove the gate of my star, of my glory, of my calling, of my ministry, of my marriage, of my son, of my daughters, of my wife, of my family. Ripa Parabada. I remove every great fruit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every great clothes the which is placed upon you is being removed right now. The Lord is ministering deliverance to you right now. Whatever great clothes that has allowed spells and charms and hexes and witchcraft to be tormenting you in your dreams, tormenting you in your body, tormenting your soul, tormenting you to even lose your peace and causing confusion and your mind spinning out of control, the grave clothes is being consumed into ashes. Somebody, the grave clothes of poverty is being consumed into ashes. No more would you go through this financial hardship. You are losing money left, right. You don't know what is happening. You work, you get the money, but something seems to be garnishing the money, snatching the money from your hands. Things are breaking, things are being destroyed. You are losing money. You are losing money. Grave clothes of poverty, grave clothes of financial difficulty today, that curse, that garment is being consumed by fire every great clothes that they put upon you beautiful you love the lord you serve the lord you've been waiting upon the lord to be able to get married but the devil satan has been standing at your right hand accusing you why you shouldn't get married but today that filthy garment that filthy grave clothes that they put upon you to keep you single to keep you unfulfilled in getting married today i see that grave clothes being consumed being consumed being consumed being consumed being burned into ashes being burned into ashes today receive the garment that will cause you to marry I see God putting you on the wedding ring, the wedding gown, the wedding gown. God is placing on you the wedding gown. God is placing upon somebody your wedding gown. God is placing on somebody your wedding gown. God is placing upon you your wedding gown. You will marry in the name of Jesus. The grave filthy cloth is being removed. The grave filthy cloth that is blocking you from getting married is being removed. Every filthy garment that the, the, and the, the demons and the spirit husband and the spirit wife has placed upon you to marry you spiritually today, it can, I command that satanic spiritual married garment and, and, and garment that are placed upon you. Catch fire. 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 Remove that filthy garment off her body. Out in the name of Jesus. That filthy garment burns into ashes. Today, receive the garment of marriage from the divine, from God. You will marry. You will succeed in marriage. You will not be disappointed anymore. In the name of Jesus, you will locate your husband. You will locate your wife. You will marry this year. In the name of Jesus, every garment that they have placed upon you for infertility and barrenness, today, that filthy garment be consumed by fire. Be consumed by fire. Somebody, you are sick. In the name of Jesus, every filthy garment of sickness that they have placed upon you, let it catch fire. Let it burn into ashes. Let it catch fire. Let it burn into ashes. Let it catch fire. Somebody, you have been struggling to get a job. Today, let that filthy garment of unemployment, joblessness, 
darkness catch fire, burn it to ashes. You've been struggling to pass an exams today. Let that filthy garment of failure and defeat catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, burn it to ashes, burn it to ashes, burn it to ashes, burn it to ashes, burn it to ashes. Somebody you dream immediately you close your eyes, you are having encounters with demons and witches are troubling you today. That filthy garment of oppression of affliction it consumes by fire let that filthy garment catch fire catch fire catch fire burn it washes burn it washes burn it washes no more will you have those nightmares anymore no more will you have those sleep paralysis anymore no more would your dreams uh, be be manipulated by demons and witches anymore in the name of jesus every filthy garment catch fire burn it washes in the name of jesus christ whatever garment has been placed upon you to delay your destiny to delay your opportunity to delay your stardom today let it catch fire let it burn it washes in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every evil garment, every evil cloth placed on your line to frustrate you, to torment you, to cause the rejection, to cause disappointment, to cause rejection, to cause disappointment. Let it catch fire. Let it catch fire. Let it catch fire. Let it catch fire. Burn it washes. Burn it washes. Burn it washes. Receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. Only believe and you shall see the glory. Now, our final prayer. Isaiah chapter 61. The Bible says, verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment, the garment, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, the garment of praise. God is going to put upon you a garment that will cause you to celebrate and have praise. The garment of praise. It is time to praise the Lord. Today, the Lord is giving you the garment of praise. You will testify of his deliverance. You will testify of your healing. You will testify of your marital restoration. You will testify that you got a job. You will testify that you have gotten your breakthrough. You have testified that the doors are opening. The garment of praise. You are going to pray, Father, clothe me with the garment of glory and the garment of praise. Father, clothe me. Because some of you, spiritually, you are naked. Spiritually, you are wearing the garment, filthy garment of poverty, filthy garment of rejection, filthy garment of disappointment. Father, today, the Lord is replacing the filthy garment with the garment of glory and the garment of praise. The garment of glory. You are going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, put upon me the garment of praise and the garment of glory, the garment of praise and the garment of glory, the garment of praise. And from today, favor, glory, and goodness shall follow you. Favor, glory, and goodness shall follow you because the Lord is putting upon you a new garment of glory, a new garment of praise. You shall begin to have praise reports. You shall begin to have testimonies. You shall begin to laugh again. You will begin to smile again. You shall dance to the glory of God because the Lord is replaced your garment, your filthy garment with a garment of glory and the garment of praise. Begin to pray. Father, clothe me with a garment of glory and the garment of praise. The garment of glory. The garment of praise. The garment of glory. From the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Clothe my body. Clothe my soul. Clothe my spirit. Clothe my body. Clothe my soul. Clothe my spirit with a garment of glory. The garment of glory. The garment of glory. The garment of praise. The garment of glory. The garment of praise. The garment of glory. The the garment of praise that I may express your glory, I may express your praise and have testimonies. I may walk in favor, I may walk in goodness and your mercies. Rakatarabados, Matakatarakataya, Maskoto Rokotoya, Repakaya, Masuparai, Reparakataya, Meskoprendi, Maskataranda. Fakoraka, Maskaroska, Rakataya, Mazuka, Mazuka, Mekereka, Masukatayada, Magroske Tereketeya. The garment of glory, the garment of glory, the garment of glory, the garment of glory. The garment of praise, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it in the name of Jesus. The garment of your glory in the name, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to take the communion. 
as you partake of the communion, may the Lord begin by his blood. You remember Joshua the high priest, what fought for him was the blood. His sins were removed. So tonight, may the, every sin, every iniquity that is causing your enemies to accuse you, as you are partake of the blood, may the blood of Christ erase our sins, our iniquities, our transgression, and may it restore the glory and the praise of God upon our lives. Just as Joshua was restored, as you partake of the blood, remember the Bible says that all the ordinances that were written up against us, he took it away on the cross and nailed it. And because of that, we are free. You, from today, you owe the devil, the demons, the witches, the spirit husband, the spirit wife, the, you owe them nothing because the blood of Christ has already paid the price, the ultimate price for you. You are forgiven. You are redeemed. You are washed by the blood. And tonight, as you partake, receive the garment of glory and the garment of praise. Everything that the devil stole from you, only believe God is restoring you. Only believe. You got to believe. That faithlessness, it's not going to help you. It's going to keep you in perpetual bondage. Believe God and begin to walk in the garment of praise and glory and testimonies and praise reports because victory has already been won through Christ. Amen. Now with the oil today, this is your prophetic direction. Before you sleep, take the oil and use it as a lotion and smear it, apply it to all your body and say, Lord, as I anoint my body, place upon me a new garment of glory and praise. Place upon me a new garment of glory and praise. And by the reason of the anointing, let every evil garment that was placed upon me spiritually be consumed by fire. So as I anoint myself, I want you to do the next three days. Just be anointing yourself and being anything that you want God to do for you. Say it and anoint yourself. Father, the garment of shame, remove it. The garment of disappointment, remove it. The garment of singleness, remove it. The garment of rejection, remove it. And as I anoint myself, Lord, place upon me the garment of praise, the garment of of glory, the garment of praise, and you can connect it to the um, Isaiah 61 verse 3, Isaiah 61 verse 3, the garment of praise, the garment of praise, that the Lord will give you a praise report. Whatever has been keeping you from your miracle because of filthy garment, as you anoint yourself in the next three days, the Lord will restore, and you, you will begin to see new things happening because spiritually, your filthy garment has been removed and a new garment of favor, acceptance, glory, and praise has been given to you. So doors must open. Opportunities must open. You must bask in the blessing of God. Do it in the next three days. Anoint yourself or your body, especially. So do it. Uh, it will be better when you are about to sleep so that you, or when you are you after bath, when you bath and you finish bath and you're about to step, step out, you, you just anoint your whole body. For the next, use the anointing as your lotion and anoint yourself. And you see how God will begin to release his supernatural favor and glory and give you whatever you are believing God for. Just say it. Just say it. Yes. Take the oil and say it. As I anoint myself, let these doors open. Let this favor come to me. Let this healing take. You just, what, as you do it by faith, the Lord will confirm his word in your life in Jesus mighty name. Tomorrow's scripture reading is um, Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Tomorrow we are meeting and we'll be working on our five prayer requests. We need to pray our five prayer requests. This is a heavy duty word. I want you to take time and assimilate it, digest it, leave it. Of late, I'm not coming to come in and give too many revelations because the revelation you, ha you had last week, you haven't even used it for your even your welfare your welfare so don't be too much about revelation make sure everywhere that comes you are able to apply it to your life and it's working for you tomorrow we'll be doing our five prayer requests and praying that god will do something new and answer us speedily matthew chapter 12 is a scripture reading the fasting continues from 6 a.m to 6 p.m and we meet at 11 p.m eastern time 4 a.m london 5 p.m uh, 5 a.m. Europe. We are using this book 
touch not my anointed touch not my anointed you will learn a lot through this book we encourage you to finish reading this book during the fasting and uh, your eyes is going to be open to the power that is resident in you and how you can live a victorious christian life overcoming your enemies through the blood through the through the anointing of the holy ghost get your copy today and it will change your life touch not my anointed it's not everybody witches can touch it's not everybody demons can touch there are those who walk in the power and the anointing of god they are indestructible unconquerable by the forces of darkness learn no get knowledge knowledge is powerful for lack of knowledge my people perish get your copy on our website www.freshfireprayer.com www.freshfireprayer.com and it will be a blessing any donation any giving even sewing into the word of god tonight you can do so through the website www.freshfireprayer.com www.freshfireprayer.com if you are using cash app fresh fire prayer fresh fire prayer fresh fire prayer one word and the zeal and other paypal information is on our website may the lord god almighty honor your faith and remove every satanic demonic filthy garment you are free you are delivered in the name of jesus god bless you i'll see you god willing tomorrow bye Thank you.